Welcome back to Book of Shadows, but let's remove these bandages quickly. It, yeah, if she keeps kicking like that, this will be over before we know it. Alright then, sit tight. We'll get those bandages off. How? She should have heard every word Kishinuma was saying, but she didn't seem to be calming down in the slightest. With all the layers of bandages crisscrossed over her ears, maybe she couldn't understand us. Unable to see, unable to hear, and too frightened to scream, I think I'd squirm too if I were in her position. Yes. This is really wrapped up tight. Okay, I think I got it. Can you see me? Uh, help me! What's happening? It's so dark! Okay, calm down. You need to stop thrashing around like that. I'm so scared. Just get me out of here. Save me. Nari, Hikari, Chihaya, someone. Anyone. You need to stay calm. Look at me. Try not to panic. Take slow, deep breaths. There you go. That's good. Everything's going to be alright. We're working on setting you free right now. Okay. Gradually, the girl began to calm down. I gently stroked her cheek, where I just slapped it. Tears were welling in both our eyes. I closed mine and nodded my head. Good girl. You just need to hang in there a little longer. We'll have you out really soon. As long as you hold still, there's nothing to be afraid of. Okay. I'm okay now. I'll be right here at your side. Just try to stay positive. Kishinuma, would you mind pushing the statue a little so it doesn't fall off the shelf? Oh, yeah. I'm on it. This is really wrapped tight, but there. I think that should do it. Are you alright? Can you stand? Uh, no, not really. My knees are shaking too much. Well, and how about just sitting up for a bit? Give those knees time to recover. I put my arms around her, and only then did I realize what she meant. She was shaking from head to toe, more violently than I'd ever felt before. She must have been frightened out of her mind. Um, th hmm? What was that? Th th thank you so much. That must have been really, really scary for you. But it's okay now. I've never seen Suzumoto act so adult. Guess it's her maternal instincts kicking in. Women are amazing. I, I really want to disagree with maternal instincts being a thing. But I don't know for sure. Even with her constantly depending on Morishige, I could totally see her turn into someone like Miss Yui when she gets older. Um, thank you both for so thank you both so much for what you've done. You saved my life. I'm just glad you're all right. Never expected someone to tell me I saved their life and mean it literally. That's for sure. My name is Nana Oga Sawara. I'm a seventh grader at Musashi Gawa Girls Junior High School. Ah, too many syllables. I'm Mayu Suzumoto. It's nice to meet you. And this delinquent looking fellow is Yoshiki Kishinuma. Oh, come on. What kind of introduction is that? I think you've been hanging out with Morishige too much. <laughs> Hard to believe you're a 7th grader, though. That means you're one year below Satoshi's sister. Yet you're so much taller and you seem so... with it. I guess Yuka must be in the school somewhere too, huh? I hope she didn't get herself separated from Mochida. 
Ishinuma and Tsuzumoto, are you two searching for your friends as well? Yeah, five friends from class one, home one homeroom TA and one classmate's little sister. We're not sure exactly what's going on in here just yet, but I'd guess they're trying to find us, too. I see. I've been separated from my friends as well, and wound up the way you found me while I was looking for them. Yeah, what the hell kind of sicko did that to you anyway? I really don't know. I was just wandering around, trying to find Nari and the others, and someone reached out from behind me and covered my eyes. Whoever it was was incredibly strong. I really couldn't fight back. If I had to guess, I'd say it was probably a really big man. A really big man, huh? Any ideas, Suzumoto? Uh, I mean... The only living people I've met here so far are Kishinuma and this girl. Well, there's I guess there's more to worry about in here than just lost souls and that ghost brat. <laughs> Nana suddenly planted both arms firmly at her sides, shrunk into herself and began shaking again. She was probably thinking about what had happened to her. I don't think we need to talk about that right now, Kishinuma. Huh? Oh. Sorry. I think I'm going to take our new friend to the pool for a moment. Will you wait here, please? What? Let's go. It's raining outside, so there's clean water, you know? Oh, okay. Now wait just a minute, it's dangerous out there. If you're thirsty, I'll gather some rainwater and bring it back for you. Wait, right here. Going to wait for us to come back. Understand? If anything happens, we'll call for you. I promise. Uh, Alright already. Just be careful, okay? Sorry about that. Kishinuma means well. He's just a little dense. Uh, it's alright. I'm sorry, too, to be such a bother. Uh, it's no bother. If something as scary as that had happened to me, I'd have done the same. But we're alone out here, so feel free to wash up as much as you need to. I'll look the other way if you'd like. Uh, yes, please, if you would. Righto. I walked over to the wall where the roof's overhang offered some protection from the rain, and waited for Nana to finish up. Taking this time to look around, I noted that the whole building was surrounded by dense forest. Theoretically, we could climb the fence here and leave. But we'd just be trading a creepy dark school for creepy dark woods. Could we survive out there? And would we actually be able to get home? I just wanted to find Shige. He'd be able to look at this situation coolly and rationally, without flipping out and getting all emotional like me. I just needed to find him, to see his face. Shige. I was starting to get teary-eyed again, when I noticed Nana lazily running toward me. As she neared, she slowed to a walk. <sighs> it's cold. Your body heat will dry you off in no time, and we can spray on a little perfume, too. We were both completely soaked from head to toe. But I was confident we'd dry off quickly enough once we got back inside the school building. And since I happened to have some travel fragrance in my pouch, I took it out and spritzed a little on and around Nana's skirt. Oh, I think I know this scent. It's Rolse's Sunlight Yellow, right? Bingo! It's my current favorite fragrance. I like it a lot, too. My allowance is pretty small, though, so I'm using a cheaper one right now. Well, once we make it out of here, I'll gladly share mine with you. Really? 
That's so kind of you. I'll make sure to wear some at our next drama club performance. It'll be my first time on stage, so I'm sure I'll need it. You're in drama club? Wow, I'm actually in our high school's drama club myself. You are? I'll bet you're an actress. Well, I do act, but I also write scripts and make costumes. We don't have a lot of members, but I don't mind. I love everything about stage drama. That's amazing. You can do all that? Nana, oh, you don't mind if I call you by your first name, do you? Of course not. You're welcome to call me Maya, too. Anyway, you really have an amazing figure. I'd love it if you'd let me make some clothes for you sometime. Oh wow, would you? Though, there are probably much slimmer girls out there that your talents would be better suited to. Like my old friend Nari. She's practically a jewel, she's so pretty. And my friend Shihaya is super cute, like a princess. Well, let's just find those friends of yours, and I'll go back home together. Kishnuma and I will be glad to help you in your search. If you help us in ours... Sure thing, Mayu. Come on, let's head back in there before we both catch colds. Oh, Nana, I noticed you have some bruises on your thigh. Did something happen? Huh? What? I didn't even know they were there. Maybe I got them when I was captured. I was pretty hysterical, so I don't have a very clear memory of everything that happened. Okay. Sorry to ask such an awkward question. All done! About time. You were out there for way too long. I was starting to get really worried. Well, a woman's beauty takes time to mold. Anyway. Well, we're out searching for Shige and the others. You mind if we also keep watch for Nana's friends? Of course I don't mind. Let's find everybody who doesn't belong here and get the hell out. In case she seems familiar and it's really bugging you, it's because she's from... Extra Chapter 1 in the first game. You two ready to go? You bet. Let's see if there's anything around here. It's a pile of twisted mangled gauze bandages that resulted from Nana's rescue. I don't see a bucket. Anyway. Double checking. The loose board is no longer spanning the hole in the floor here. It's unclear what happened to it. Maybe it fell in, or maybe someone took it. Either way, it's no longer possible to continue down the hall from here. Doesn't look that far. We should be able to jump it, don't you think? I don't know what it's like for you boys, but us ladies wouldn't stand a chance. We'd need something to grab onto at the very least. So I guess if we had a long pole or a rope or something, I could go over first and help you two across. Hmm. Enormous gap in the floor here. It's much too big to cross. All right.
open says me, it's locked. Locked is better than affixed to the wall. A key I found earlier might open it. Yeah, okay. No good. Guess it's the wrong lock. Maybe it's just got too much rust on it to fit in the lock. Here, let me see it. Okay, but what are you planning to do with it? I'm going to scrape it on the floor here and try to pry some of it off. That might be a good idea. There we go. Good as new. When you leave keys buried in the ground or stored in damp places, they get rusty. And the rust changes their, changes their shape. See? Fair point, but it still seems like it's too small a key for this keyhole. Huh? Look, there's something written on it. You could just barely make it out, but it's there. Hey, you're right. Those are letters carved right into it. Shnuma breaking the rust off the key uncovered a label on its grip. Science lab. Staff only. Guess that settles that. Seems like a handy key to have. So, can't go through this door. I already tried that. Oh well. At least now I have a key. Now I know where it's from. Can I take these? Maybe we could use these as a makeshift rope. Good. Nana doesn't look too pleased to be over here. I gathered up the loose bandages and handed them to Kishnuma. Kishnuma then obediently pulled them taut in a few places to test their tensile strength. There's definitely enough here to work with. And as long as we fold it over enough times, I don't think there'd be any risk of it tearing. There are two strips too, we could probably twist them together. And the end result should be about as sturdy as a real rope. And so we folded both strips of gauze in half, then twisted it and the double ply strips together to form something that resembled a braid. I'd done something similar to to this once before when making rope-like decorations for theater costumes, so it didn't prove to be particularly difficult. It almost felt like rope making 101. In 10 minutes time, presto, we had a do-it-yourself rope in our hands. Granted, it was pretty flimsy compared to the resin ropes that you might buy at a home center, but it seemed like it would hold one person's weight just fine. Well... Guess it's back to the hole in the floor. <laughs>